Now it's time for the Coach Penny Hardaway Show, presented by Cook's Best Control. The show is supported by your local Toyota dealer. Visit buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Subway, make it what you want. And AutoZone. For parts to helpful advice, AutoZone has everything you need to get in the zone. AutoZone. Welcome in. Hope you got to stay warm today and to enjoy the Martin Luther King holiday. I know for me, Coach, it's a day I reflect. I know I think about education and where we are. I know it has meaning to you, too. Uh, absolutely. Uh, it's a day that I reflect on when it comes to uh, the Dr. King, who is a special human being uh, who believed in equality, you know, for all races. And, uh, you know, he did a wonderful job and, uh, and really was just a beautiful person. And, uh, you know, we're, we're, we were glad to have had him on this earth for sure. Absolutely. So you had only one game this week. It was a good one. Maybe the best performance so far by uh, your team in the Penny Hardaway era. Yeah, if I can say almost a perfect game, this was that game against SMU. We had a full week to uh, prepare. Uh, we did a great job. The coaching staff getting the guys prepared. They were locked in, and we showed that on Saturday. Unbelievable game. Yeah, this, this SMU team was picked seventh in the league and and they were playing good they came in they were 11 and 6 just like memphis they'd won three games in conference and now they were without their best player but you really took away every other weapon they had yeah well i wouldn't say their best player but one of their glue guys that uh that really is big for their team but uh jamal mcmurray was uh their leading scorer uh he um he didn't have such a great game because of the defensive assignments that we had as a team but uh them missing that one guy did hurt them but i think it was just you know, incredible day for us. Everything was hitting on all cylinders, and uh, it didn't matter who was in there that day. We were we were playing great basketball. Well, it started off, you uh, changed lineups, and that is something now I'm getting to expect every <laughs> time, but you saw something with the small lineup because they're small. Yeah, they have. Uh, they had a big, which is like a more what we call a hybrid. He wasn't really a five, he was a four, and we felt like it was easier to put uh, Rainier Thorne on him and then to start keeping Davenport at the four instead of starting big with Isaiah Maurice or, or Mike Parks, and it worked in our favor. It absolutely worked in your favor. We're going to see more of that? Yeah, we're going to see more of that, ah, for sure. We're definitely going to see more of that. All poker player right there. You're never going to find out <laughs> until game time, that's for sure. Here's what's coming up on the Penny Hardaway Show. You'll get highlights of that game with SMU. You heard them. Perfect game. It was close, that's for sure. A little inside access. We'll be talking with Penny's son. And we mentioned he was a honor roll student, Dean's List. He's going to talk about academics. You also hear from Tony Madlock, and then the Auto Zone Road ahead, and it's tough. In Philly on Thursday, and then home against the number one team preseason in the league with the giant in the middle. That'll be UCF. But when we come back, we'll take a look at what Penny just called a near perfect game. You're watching the Coach Penny Hardaway Show. So in comes SMU, a, a team under Tim Jankovic that has been really successful in the last five years, three NBA stars. They were missing Foster, but as you mentioned, Coach, they've got this terrific pair of guards, McMurray, and I don't want to take anything away from Witt because here's a 6'3 guy leading them in rebounds, and you came up with this new lineup, and everybody played well. Yeah, McMurray and Witt are definitely two of the best um, players in our league as far as backcourt, and uh, we held them under control. Uh, we went small to try to offset all of the things that they really want to do with those two guys, and uh, you know, I'm so proud of the team and, uh, and being so focused for the entire game. And then Kareem Bruton went crazy. That's the first of four in a row. You tacked inside. It was a good day for everybody. Bruton, by the way, today named to the honor roll. Every week we get a guy in the honor roll. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, first of all, Kareem's game. I mean, he's catching rhythm right now, and uh, he was on fire Saturday, and I was so proud of him because he worked so hard on his game. As far as uh, the academic side, man, we're always proud of those guys for doing it in the classroom and on the court. So, a lot of great passing in this first half. 14 buckets were assisted on 16 made. That is something you would love. Oh, uh, absolutely. That's what I've been preaching all season, that our, our assist to turnover ratio and uh, with us having those 14 assists, uh, assisted on, on 16 baskets, that was, that was, you know, the light of my, uh, the, day, the date of my life. And, um, I just wanted them to continue to just get those assists and then uh, 24 assists on a full day. I was very happy behind that. I think an excellent job, too, of exploiting the inside. Both those hybrid guys are not the greatest inside guys. You knew that. Parks had a game. Davenport always has a good game. Yeah, I knew when they went small, our smalls were better on the inside. So we kind of pounded them on the inside with Keevan and Mike. 
And then when Isaiah came in, he got a couple buckets down there. But yeah, we had a game plan and stuck to it, and uh, it worked well for us. And 11 dishes by Jeremiah Martin. He set up parts there beautifully. Here he sets up the long ball. And what got into Bruton, by the way, in this game? Five threes in the first half. Kareem has that ability. He is a great offensive player. He's a guy that uh, we've been trying to get more minutes to, and uh, he's proven that he deserves those minutes by going out there and doing the things like he did Saturday. And Jeremiah Martin with 11 assists, he sacrificed the scoring to get everybody else involved, and it was a big day for everybody. So did Antoine Jones that behind the back pass was a thing of beauty, and then he attacked there, and you built this lead. I can remember, and I think it was a little before you, a 24-0 start, Elliot Perry was leading the way at Freedom Hall. This was 13-0. I think that's the best start since that 24-0 start. Yeah, it was a beautiful start. I was actually scared to sub. You know, I wanted the guys to stay yeah. out there because I didn't want to really break that rhythm. Sure. And um, they did an unbelievable job, came over to the bench, the entire team was fired up, and it made the bench go in and just be, and play just as hard. So just definitely proud of the starters, and we have to continue that going forward. And the, it never got close in the second half. And Tyler got got going too. I mean, everybody got going. Everybody who played in this game scored. But everybody was focused. You know, you can just tell for this game, not because we had the Memphis State jerseys on, which I love, but everybody was focused from day one uh, when we started preparing for this. And you know, couldn't wait to come out and show that we were ready. And um, like I said, everybody was hitting on all cylinders. How about that dunk by Thornton? He's kind of your glue guy. Yeah, Ray. You know, incredible. 14 rebounds. Probably could have had 20. No, he has that ability to come out on a nightly basis and do that for us uh, on the rebounding side. And on the hustle side, he's always doing that, so I was proud of those guys. You built that lead at one time to 35, a 22-point win in a, a, against a team that's a good team. And the net today, that's the new RPI. Folks, it's at 66. We're trying to come, we're trying to bring that down. For sure. We're definitely not trying to be in the 60s by the time the season is over. We want to be uh, controlling our own destiny, but I was definitely proud of the guys, and, and we're fighting hard to try to get to the NCAA tournament. That's our goal. We take a break, and when we come back, your old backcourt mate, our friend Tony Madlock, front and center, in just a minute on The Penny Show. You're watching the Coach Penny Hardaway Show. There is a great history between the city of Memphis and, of course, the school and assistant coach Tony Madlock. I got a chance to sit down and talk with the Tigers' assistant coach. Always a pleasure to talk to my old friend Tony Madlock. And, you know, it's, this is a little bit like reliving memories all year long. You go back to that backcourt with this head coach and that relationship, how special is that? Very special. Anytime you think about the, the good old days uh, from just growing up uh, playing in Memphis uh, at the high schools at Melrose and at Treadwell, and then you think about playing together at, at, at Memphis State at the time, and now to be uh, on the coaching staff with him is, is unbelievable. If you don't mind, because you, know, you were, I know, looking for a gig, you were the head coach for a little bit at Ole Miss filling in for Andy Kennedy. Talk about how you and Penny got this together for you to be his first hire. Well, it, it goes back to our relationship, and it's always been really good. When we were teammates, it was really good, and then it really got better uh, as I was assistant coach and always recruiting his players. So I got a chance to meet with him and talk to him all the time on the AAU circuit and coming to East High School. So it just was a relationship that kept building, kept building, kept building. And when he got the job, he made a phone call. He said, hey, you want to be part of my, my staff? And I said, you know it. <laughs> and that was perfect timing, too, wasn't it? Talk about your relationship when you guys were in high school and then college. Well, one thing that I've, I tell everybody is that Penny, uh, first of all, is a great human being. He is a great man. His heart probably jumps out of his chest. Uh, he's one of those type guys. So he's always been that guy that you can always talk to. He's down to earth. Even though he was a superstar in college, he was a superstar in the NBA. Uh, he's been always been a down to earth guy. So our relationship has always been really good. And like I said, you know, it just got better as time went on. I know he's always been a good guy, as you say, and always has given back. 
What about his maturation from a guy who was uh, a, a young kid all the way through those superstars uh, years to now? What, what's, what's that change been like? Well, I, I think for him, he could say that going from being a middle school coach, uh, you know, at Leicester, at Leicester Middle School to being at, at East High School and then being a, a, a AAU coach at the highest level, at the Nike level, uh, he, he has grown uh, from day one. And he is continuing to grow. You know, he, he what he does as the college as a college coach is he knows his responsibilities. Uh, his X and O's are off the chain. He's able to he's able to relate to our guys. Uh, you see his swag. You see, you know, and, and our guys love that. And and recruits around the country love that. So you know, he he's doing a really good job of of, of doing everything from A to Z. Sure to update us on your journey because you left the University of Memphis, and I know you're a player. What has that been like? Where did you start? How did you get all the way to here? Well, this is a long story. You got, yeah. you got enough time? We do. We got a few. Well, this is my 22nd year as a college basketball coach. You know, I started as, as a, you know, as assistant coach at Merrill's High School, uh, and I was able to, I was lucky enough to get with Dickie Nutt at Arkansas State. I go from Arkansas State to uh, UTEP. I go to UTEP with Tony Barbie. Uh, from UTEP, I go to Auburn uh, with, with Barbie also, and then with uh, Andy Kennedy at Ole Miss, and now I'm back at home. And now you are back at home and your your growth too i mean how much different are you in terms of viewing the game relating to people than when you were at melrose high school well it's a lot different just because you get older you get more mature so a lot of different things that you go you go through uh but just being able to you know be around the guys i've always been a, a player's coach i've always been a guy that can relate uh, being from Memphis and being from from uh, from uh, Melrose, it's always helped me in everything that I've been able to do in, in my coaching career. Uh, so from from growing uh, as a recruiter, because you know, when you first get in this game, that's what you want to be known as. You know, as you come in, and you got to say, "Hey, what is my worth?" And my worth is, "Hey, who can I sign as a you know as as a college recruiter?" And then you kind of grow from that. You go from being a recruiter to being an X and O guy to being able to relate from everything from from budget. Uh, to, to everything that has to do with college athletics. So I think I've grown where I can, when, and being a head coach uh, on an interim basis at Ole Miss, you know, I think it, it taught me um, everything that needs to go on uh, from sitting in that top seat. And uh, I think I'm ready for that whenever that ch uh, chance comes again. What do you think your most important role on this team is? Well, I do everything from A to Z. And that's one thing that Penny has allowed this whole coaching staff to do is you, we all get to talk about uh, everything from what are we going to do game plan wise to scouting to recruiting uh, to the academic part of it so I, I probably do everything from A to Z on this staff you know I'm, I'm with uh, Coach Board and, and Coach Hamilton and making sure our guys are doing what they're supposed to do in the classroom I'm with Penny and, and Mike and, and Sam uh, talking about what we're doing X and O's and recruiting so do a little bit of everything. Been fun for me to watch your journey my friend. Appreciate it thanks very much. And life has gone full circle. He assisted you as a player, yes. now he's assisting you as a coach. Yeah, he was my favorite teammate back in the day because he was so unselfish. He was really smart. He graduated in three years. Uh, just a brilliant mind and an even better person. He is my go-to guy. He's the MVP of this staff because he has the experience. And like he says, he does from A to Z. And, uh, you know, I'm so blessed to have him and him to be available at the time. And uh, I'm enjoying this journey continuing from when we played until now. Time for the Cooks Pest Control Player of the Week. So not only did Bruton get honor all, he got our highest honor, and he was outstanding this week. Kareem definitely deserving, has been working really hard, has been, has been studying more film, and has really bought into everything that we're telling him, and I'm glad to see him be rewarded. 20 points, three steals in that game, six threes. We only hope he can keep that going. Time for a quick timeout. When we come back, inside access, and you'll hear from Jaden Hardaway. You're watching the Coach Penny Hardaway Show. Time for some inside access. You know, it's really never easy to sit out, be a red shirt when you're raring to go, but that's what Jaden Hardaway has had to do, and he talks about that and what he brings to the table next year. It's been a great learning experience. Um, this is being part of practices, um, learning how to compete on the highest level, learning how to play harder than I've ever played before, and then also in the games, like, Kind of like getting that whole experience. You know what I mean, it's been really helpful. Sitting back, watching the games and stuff, like seeing like how we like huddle up, getting our different game plan and stuff. I mean, it's way different from high school, obviously. And I'm just learning 
and I'm keep learning every day. I could bring um, you know, playmaking, uh, shot making. I mean, I play with a high IQ. Um, I'm uh, continuing to improve defensively and rebounding wise, you know, every day. So I, I think it bring a lot of aspects to the game on the court next year. You know, student athlete, student comes first. That's always been instilled. And uh, growing up, like, my parents were really tough on me when it came to grades. So I've always worked very hard in the classroom. And uh, being a dean's list is just a great accomplishment. And uh, I'm just going to keep continuing to improve in the classroom. The school has been very welcoming to him. I mean, they see all the hard work and effort he puts into us. And uh, they're just, uh, they're just uh, extremely grateful to uh, everything that he offers to this team and to the city. You know, he does a lot for the city, so they're just thankful for that. <laughs> so we, we got a few things in, in common here. Yes. When he makes the Dean's List, if I recall correctly, you made the I Dean's did. List. Two, you had to sit out a year, yes. and I know that wasn't easy. No, it wasn't. Uh, the similarities are different because I didn't pass the ACT uh, when I got here, but I did have to sit out. But I was the Dean's List the year that I sat out. So we have that similarity. We held Jaden back because we wanted him to see the season for a year. We wanted him to get stronger. Uh, the academic side, I'm so proud of him that, for that. He's made straight A's his entire life. So that's just what he does. But the basketball side, just wanted him to get stronger, wanted him to get bigger and better and, uh, and kind of see everything for what it was the first year. And he's able to practice with the team and travel with the team. I couldn't practice with the team. So I had to do the inter intramural route. Mm. He's doing it with the team. So the similarities are there, but uh, honestly, just really proud of him. And he can shoot the ball, right? I mean, yeah. he'll make contributions. Yeah, he's a playmaker shooter. Uh, he definitely will bring something to the table. He's not just a coach's son uh, that's playing. He's, he's somebody that's gaining the respect of his peers and his teammates and coaching staff. And uh, he's doing a great job this year. You know, he wears number 25. And I've been meaning to ask you, how did you pick 25? I picked 25 because of Danny Manning. Really? Back in the day, I was a huge Danny Manning fan when he was at Kansas, the year that they won the national championship, and his father, Ed Manning, was recruiting me at Treadwell and brought me like a bunch of books on Kansas, and Danny was in there, so that's why I started wearing number 25. Interesting, and now, you, and now you're both, of course, college coaches. He's at Wake Forest, and so I guess one, must, 25 must have been taken in, in Orlando, so you chose one because of Penny? Yeah, Nick Anderson, whose friend had gotten murdered in high school, right. um, Ben Wilson who was oh, a very yeah. popular person, Chicago. he was number 25, so Nick was wearing that in honor of him. So I just kind of put Penny and one stand and together with the number one and started looking at it from an endorsement uh, point of view, and uh, it worked. Yeah, I always got those wheels turning, <laughs> that is for sure. We take the break. How are those wheels turning for the road ahead? One's in Philly, one's at home against a giant. We talk about that in a minute. Watching the Coach Penny Hardaway Show. The Auto Zone Road Ahead is a very tough road, that is for sure. It starts in Philly on Thursday, 6 o'clock Memphis time. The Owls are 14 and 4, 4 and 1, but they did lose at home for the first time to Penn the other night. Yeah, Penn is actually pretty good. I've been watching them. Uh, they've done a fantastic job this year on, uh, on how they play. Uh, Temple, you know, who's in our conference, has been playing great basketball. 4-1 in the conference, they're playing well at home, and the only team that have beaten Houston this year. And then it doesn't get much easier because the number one preseason team, UCF in town, that will be a Sunday afternoon game at 3 Taco Fall, the giant in the middle. Can you still go small against that group? Yeah, I don't know. I'll have to think about that. But uh, we'll, we might have to just pull them out on the perimeter and go small sometimes and, uh, and kind of use the ISO game against them. Yeah, man, he <laughs> is tough. Last thing, because we're almost out of time, those unis, the Memphis State unis, we going to ever see those again? We're probably going to see something similar to that next year. We're trying to change the uniforms up a little bit and hopefully some more Memphis State. You, you designed those things, yes, too, or you yeah. told Nike to do that, right? I told Nike to do it. They did a fantastic job. Everybody loved them, and we loved them. Beautiful stuff. So a big week for sure. The net down to 66. If you sweep this week, whoa. Who knows? We'll see you right here next Monday. Have a great week, everybody. Thanks for watching the Coach Benny Hardaway Show.
presented by Cook's Pest Control. The show is supported by your local Toyota dealer. Visit buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Subway, make it what you want. And AutoZone. From parts to helpful advice, AutoZone has everything you need to get in the zone. AutoZone.